Diego. In goal, number 29, Benjamin Roach. And in the midfield, number 18, Lenny Carrion. For number 9, Alu Giacate. Defense, number 13, Tyler Gavara. Defense, number 45, Harold Harrison. Defense, number 4, Jacob Cup. Midfield, number 6, Paula Perez. Defense, number 28, Kadeem Shay. Forward, number 14, Walter Varela. Midfield, number 21, Daniel Vicente. Forward, number 19, Hello Malongo. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and kindly move your hats to the scene of the national anthem performed tonight by J.B. Sachs. And we haven't had a chance to talk about this, Mary Beth, but uh, Albion San Diego has signed a new defensive midfielder, Jeffrey Otto, who has experience not just at the P UPSL level, but what, based on what I'm looking at right now, he was the first signing by Atlanta United FC's MLS in 2016. Otto has since played with Charleston Battery of the USL, the Moines Menace of USL as well and Atlanta SC of NISA, so a very experienced player at various divisions and various professional levels in the U.S. Yeah, exactly, and uh, what position... I'm sorry? Uh, what position is he going to be playing for? It Albion? says here, uh, based on the information that I've gathered, we just found out about it literally five minutes before we went on air, that uh, he's a defensive midfielder. He has been a winner of Player of the Week, UPSL National Player of the Week in 2020, so... One of those players that can definitely make a change of pace. You got the lead at the final couple of minutes of the game or the last second half. You want to control possession. Is one of those guys you can bring in and help you get the uh, victory. Yeah, I wonder if he's going to take any um, of the pick up any of the space uh, from Conte. That's Ibrahim very true. Conte leaving. Ibrahim Conte. A similar now. position as Conte played. I would imagine that's going to be their strategy for him. Conte was a very strong, solid player. going to be a very exciting match. It'll be very exciting to see if he uh, gets in as a substitute at all today. And the team has had opportunity to practice after the LA Force match. 
so perhaps he did have an opportunity to create some chemistry with his teammates. But again, we'll see. He's not on the starting roster, obviously, but we may see him as a substitute coming in in the second half, maybe later, later in the first half. Yeah, and also uh, it's probably something to note that uh, Albion San Diego has another match coming up in just a couple days on Saturday. And, uh, you know, with this weather, I don't know, it, it might be rainy this weekend, but if it stays really hot, that'll be, that'll be very uh, tough on them. They need to, you know, work on staying hydrated even when they're not playing. So we see the players coming onto the field right now. Gavarra, Pelaez right there, and Hop having a few words. All going through some final thoughts. And Ben Roach having a chat with his teammates. Yeah, Ben Roach is a great leader. Yes, that match you were talking about on September 10th, this Saturday coming up, will be against none other than the Michigan Stars, who we were just talking about a few minutes ago, right there playing for contention for that second spot after their victory against LA Force a few minutes before we went on air. Looks like both teams are done with their thoughts and their impressions of how they're going to plan out this first half. Chattanooga FC as well, ready to go. Absolutely. It's, it's going to be very intense. Very, I'm excited to watch this. Yeah, this is one of the matches I had circled in my calendar when I saw the uh, schedule come out early in the season. So I always want to get a chance to see Chattanooga, Chattanooga FC play live. So we'll see what they got today. And there's, there's the, the kickoff. Yep. Pablo Pelaez with the long pass to the side. Little header out there to the feet. Loose ball, and it'll be a throw in for Chattanooga FC. It's a good, good moving, fast moving start to the match already. Long throw in. Kadim Sai using his long legs to go around <laughs> that play. He sure is. He's and got the captain's badge on his arm today. Chattanooga FC with another throw in right now. Goes long to the side. Rodriguez, oh, ball gets knocked out. Still possession for Chattanooga FC. As we see Robertson coming over to get the ball, looking over, see who can be open. One of his teammates. As we see movement, Gonzalez again. There's Walter Varela. Carrion now with possession to Varela. Varela's got some room right there. <laughs> Taking it up the left. Oh. Good reaction by Chattanooga FC. It'll be a throw in for Albion San Diego. Here comes Tyler Gabara to grab that ball up. He's probably going to be looking for Varela. Looks pretty open there. Maybe Carrion. And there it is to Varela. Varela makes the turn. Goes all the way around to Jacob Hopp. Jacob Hopp's got some space as well. Harold Hansen. See a little bit of pressure here from Chattanooga, forcing the ball back to hop. And he goes long. And Chattanooga FC deflects it and towards the middle of the field. Oh, Loose ball oh. right there. Who's going to get it? 50-50. And a whistle. It'll be a free kick for Chattanooga FC. Although Daniel Vicente was a little uh, forward moving on that. Not stopping when he hit the player. We get a well, quick, they took yep. They gave it a lateral kick there instead of uh, forward. Gonzalez once again, but loses possession. It'll be a throw in for Albion San Diego. Yeah, uh, it almost looks a little bit like these guys are already conserving energy, just knowing what the rest of this match is going to be like. That heat is serious. Gavarra with the throw in. See a little bit of pressure here from Chattanooga FC. Daniel Vicente all the way around to Jacob Hopp. Ben As Nagelstad looks to pressure Hop, And you see Ben Roach watching highly alert also. Pablo Pelaez now with possession. Back to Hop. He's got Karim Sai but decides to go to Ben Roach. See Chad Nuga once again trying to force a turnover. Harold Hansen will take the ball to Pelaez. Harold Hansen has oh, got some space right there. Absolutely. Great give and go. There's... Oh, Milango was almost right there, but he kind of hesitated. I think it was way in front of him. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe he could have poked a foot at it. Maybe changed up that play versus the keeper grabbing it. Now Chattanooga starts their counter. Oh, Harold. Good Harold Hansen job. on the ground keeps it. Not necessarily supposed to play on the ground, but the ref says play <laughs> on. Pablo Palais goes long. 
the Diacate. Can he get there? He does. Oh, great reaction by the goalkeeper. Gonzalez. Gonzalez right there. Diacate was almost able to get that. And he was too. And Gonzalez took a big move and came out. That was that was a Ben Roach like move. Now ball rotates around. Vicente. The Pelaez. A little bit of patience here shown by Albion San Diego. Oh. Ball gets deflected, but gets to Karim Sai. To Tyler Gavara. Ooh, keeps it forward moving. Mayele Malango tries to make the turn. He does. Nice. He's got a man there. He is able to beat him. Can he get the cross in? He's got two guys on him. Oh. He's still got possession still got, right there. Absolutely. That's some great. He does get the cross in. Mix and match there. But it's uh, deflected by Chattanooga FC, and they have possession now. Now they start their counter. Moving up the, oh, Harold Hansen puts the stymie on that. Throw in for Albion San Diego. Yeah, you're right about conserving that energy here. I can already tell that the players have that in mind. And Barella has Shoot the ball. It. Yeah, he should, oh. Yes, through. Don't Mayla hesitate Malango. on those shots. He's oh, got goodness. a chance. Oh. Good reaction by Chattanooga FC. Absolutely. Uh, Stripling was right there to grab it and knock it out of danger. And there'll be a corner kick for Albion San Diego, the first opportunity for them. Yeah, could be interesting. Like Set pieces are always dicey. Lenin Carrion, who will be executing the corner kick, or maybe Pablo Pelaez, we shall see. Could be a uh, drawn up play right now. It is. Pablo Pelaez back to Carrion. Ball gets deflected and it'll be thrown for Albion. Paulo Pelaez looking around for some movement from his teammates. Finds the Acate. Sometimes those throw-ins at that same corner spot can be almost as dangerous. Pelaez now possession. Ball gets deflected out. And it'll be another corner kick for Albion San Diego. Keeping it in front of uh, the Chattanooga net, which is pretty good for, you know, I know there's not very many minutes passed, but that's still a good spot to be in. This is one of those games that five minutes might feel like ten minutes, actually, because of the weather. We'll see how the players react. Yeah, it, it's interesting to watch them because, like we were saying, they almost seem like they're conserving energy, yet they seem to be moving fast at the same time. That's the corner and the goalkeeper Gonzalez right there. Gonzalez does good what reaction. he needs to do. Just a little bit of chippiness there. Jacob Hopp with one of the players for Chattanooga, no whistle. And now Gonzalez is telling his teammates that he wanted to go fast, didn't get the attention, and now he goes short. Oh, so Malongo almost got it. He almost on that. did, yeah, he almost did. Those ones are so disappointing when you play, when you think you've got a boot on it and you just don't. Yeah. Let's see Chattanooga here. Playing the ball in the back. A little bit of pressure right now. Landing Carrion forces it further back. Yeah, from, takes it from McGrath. Oh, Good Tyler reaction, Garibara right there. It'll be a throw in for Chattanooga FC. Gamara is one of those guys. Uh, he's one of my favorite players to watch because he is super instinctive. Like, I think his feet know where they need to be a minute before his brain does, honestly. He just gets there. There's Osei. Magostad right there to his teammate. Two guys right. right there. Ball gets deflected right to us. Good reaction, Mary Beth. Got it. I win. <laughs> keeper of the year. Told you you could try out for a goalkeeper one day. Now I'm a defender. I'm not a keeper. <laughs> but my foot knows where that ball was, and we have a table above it. I still got it. Ball gets deflected. Robertson with possession. Oh, it's going to be a It'll throw be a in. It'll be a throw in, yeah, for Chattanooga and a yeah. quick start. Yeah, they waste zero time on that. Good job by Guevara fighting for the ball. Navarella. These and teams a whistle. are definitely, yeah. definitely showing that they both want this very, very much. It, I don't feel like it's too chippy, but they're both just playing very athletically, very. Yeah, they know the implications of what's going on right now as Nagelstad is complaining to the official that the ball was never slowed down enough. Play continues. Now Chattanooga FC regains possession. Cerro goes all the way around to the other side. Will he get there? He does not. And it'll be a throw in for Albion San Diego, executed by Pelaez. To a little bit of chippiness again right there. Contact, no whistle. Chattanooga regains. They start their counterattack all, all the way around. That was an interesting pass, <laughs> but he did it. It went through. It was um, effective. Not both pretty teams, yeah, exactly. It was beautiful, but, but it yeah. made it, yeah. yeah. 
Looks like Chattanooga might be uh, uncertain of where they think their player should be, like their man. That they're having a little trouble setting up. Yeah, their communication might be an issue at the moment, but they still have possession right now. Just trying to get the cross and trying to see if they, now it gets stolen by Varela. Who's moving very quickly and he has to turn it a little bit, manages to juke He's another Gavara defender. There. Gavara has some space. Let's see what he can do with it. Chip Back to, to the Varela. Middle. Yeah. Nice Vicente, turns. Harold Hansen. Now you see the defenders for Chattanooga in better position. Ball gets deflected. Back oh. to Varela. Gavara. Gavara manages to get there in time. Absolutely, Vicente. Now Varela still. Oh, good, good move by Varela, but the shot is a little, not a little, a lot, a lot. <laughs> Over off. the fence, my yes. friends, and it is out of there. Yeah, that was a good uh, swoop by Varela. Nice turn and uh, keeping it away from the defender's feet. Now we get the start of play, Chattanooga FC. Ball rotated around. Uh, beyond San Diego giving up some space there. No real pressure at the moment. No, I don't think they need to. Yeah, it's about conserving energy, as you were saying. It's going to be a long game. A lot of tired legs at the end, so we'll see what, as the ball gets deflected out of bounds, that'll be all beyond San Diego's possession. Yeah, um, like I said, Chattanooga still seems like they're having a little issue setting up, and I think Albion is taking advantage of that. They are taking that opportunity to not uh, make as many charges or as many movements. Think, you know. Ball stays in bounds. Vicente to Harold Hansen. The game side back to Vicente. Yeah, Vicente crossing the pitch. He's doing a lot of running in the middle of the field right now. Gavara. Up to Carrion. Carrion's got some space. He forces the ball forward. He loses possession. Regained by Chattanooga. He almost kept that from Chattanooga. Almost. That was a good slide tackle, though. They haven't had any play at all in uh, Albion's end of the field. Pitch. Gavara regains it for Albion San Diego. Back to Vicente. Over the players. A little bit of pressure again from Chattanooga FC. To Jacob Hopp, back to Pelaez. See if he tries one of those patented chips. No, he decides to go short with Harold Hansen. He got a cross from Hansen. Oh, Almost goodness. gets through. Good reaction by Chattanooga defenders. Excellent jump by that guy. Got it. Was able to get ahead on it and get it out of danger. Now they start their counterattack. Oh, oh. And Harold Hansen. Good job by Hansen again, but possession maintained with Chattanooga FC. Levin Carrion almost forces a turnover. Uh -oh. Now we get a whistle on him. Free kick for Chattanooga. Oh, Chattanooga's player lost their shoe. It's got to take some serious pressure to, to take a boot off. I remember mine were always so tight. <laughs> We're gonna have a little delay. I, they should utilize this time for a hydration break because he still doesn't have a shoe on. As the referee whistles play. It's like, shoe on or not, we're going. And now we start with Chattanooga towards the middle of the field. Good reaction by Varela. Can't find Diacate, he almost did, but we have a whistle right now by the referee. Looks like there was contact on the pass. Varela's on the ground, grabbing it towards his ankle. Oh. Hopefully it's not a serious injury right now. Jacob Hopp wants, goes to check on him. Was, uh, oh yeah, it's somewhere on his leg. Kadeem I don't know if it's Sai, an ankle or not. Kadim Sai telling the referee, maybe. It almost looks like his knee. Yeah, it, might, it happened really fast, so. No yellow card was issued. Kareem Sai was having some words there with the referee about the contact. So we see the replay right here. Here we go. Nothing so far. I mean right there, oh. there was contact on there the There was path. a little contact, and it almost looks like he took a wrong turn on that leg, too. Ben Roach to Kareem Sai. Kareem Sai to Gavara. We see some more pressure here from Chattanooga. Ball all the way around to Jacob Hopp. 
who casually just jumps back that step to get it. No, pr no worries in his mind. Marcos Nagelstad forcing some pressure there as well. Good job there by Daniel Vicente. Or, sorry. Karen hands Carry it on. off to Palayas and Palayas. then over to um, Harold Hansen. Harold Hansen has some space one on one. Can he get through? He gets the cross in. He's got Varela right there. Can he get the shot? Oh. And he does with the goal. <laughs> Albion San Diego. Walter Valela right on the spot from the beautiful pass from Harold Hansen. It looked like it was going to go out of bounds for a second, but it didn't. And now it's one nothing San Diego, Mary Beth. Absolutely. And like, you know, we were, we've were we been mentioning, all the play has truly been in that uh, end of the pitch. And uh, it was bound to happen sooner than later. Uh, Let's see the replay right here. Oh, here we go. Yeah, here's the replay. Oh, oh we, got a a Chilena. <laughs> we got a Chilena attempt there. I think it was... Uh, Mayela Malango, who missed it, but luckily for him, it and went right to Varela. And we got the goal right there. Everything happens for a reason, and it's one nothing San Diego. We see Ben Roach pumping up his team. And now we'll see what Chattanooga has in store for the f remainder of the first half. It's the referee whistles play again. As they start to go long, a little bit too long. And Ben Roach will let that go out of bounds for the goal kick. But if you're Ziggy Corey Toski, this is just what the doctor ordered in a game like this, where opportunities, they're not going to be plentiful and they, under these circumstances, taking an early lead is always beneficial at home. Absolutely. And, you know, Ziggy is one of those players that having the lead is just such a, even though it's not a large lead and it could easily be made up, it still is comforting, for lack of a better word, to know that you were that first one to get across the line there. Chattanooga regains possession right here. We we see the ball going backwards all the way to the goalkeeper, yeah, Gonzalez. He, yeah, you know he's disappointed, but there was so much action in front of that net that I, it, it would have been hard to know where, whether a shot was coming from I which mean, it was direction. practically a point-blank shot, and it was perfectly placed. Nothing any goalkeeper could do in that situation. Uh, well, absolutely, and like, four different Albion players had an opportunity. Like, Diacate tried to get a foot on it, and so uh, Gonzalez definitely had his work cut out for him there. As Barella goes quickly to Mayel Malongo. He's got some space again. And we're back in front of the back net to Barella. already. He can't control it. Malongo does. They're still there. Decides to go to Pelaez. Pelaez loses possession. It was, a it was a good thought by him. Just didn't make yeah, it to I where his goal was. Yeah, I don't think Malongo knew where the pass was going to go to. And now Chattanooga starts on the counter. And there were several Chattanooga players in, in the in mix. Here comes Gabar with some pressure. Makes him go back. Ball gets rotated around. Gonzalez telling his players where he wants them. Still with possession. No real pressure yet from Albion San Diego. Again, conserving that energy. Now the ball all the way around to the other side. Harold Hansen is there to do a little defense, and Jacob Hopped is waiting in the background. Ball towards the middle. Ooh, Opportunity for a shot here. Nagelstad looking for some space. Gives it back to his teammate, Cerro. Now the ball into the box, back to Cerro. See if he can Harold create Hansen something. Harold Hansen gets a boot on it. Got four players for Albion again, still in the box. The ball gets ro rotated all the way around. The shot is just wide. And it'll be a goal kick for Albion San Diego. Looks but, uh, like Roach didn't take that, that dive very well. Looks yeah, like he might have hurt something there. For a split second there, he did kind of. Not a fan. Yeah. But a shot there for Chattanooga, their first one of the game. They had some interesting playing out there. I don't know if you saw it. There was like a drop where one player just dropped it as the other player was crossing. It was, uh, they had some good play out there. Definitely keeping Albion defense on their toes. This Ben Roach is going to go along with this one. All the way past the midfield stripe. Diacate fighting for the ball. Varela keeps it. Rotated back to Jacob Hopp. Over to Harold Hansen. We see some more pressure here from Chattanooga as he finds Lightning Carrion, but he can't keep possession right there. And we get the whistle and the free kick for Chattanooga FC. Yeah, that's a couple um, missed opportunities by Carrion there. We get the start of play. It's Pablo Pelaez right there, and the ball gets deflected out by Harold Hansa. It'll be a throw in for Chattanooga. Loose ball right now. Good job by Daniel Vicente. But the ball bounces back to the visitors. 
Short pass towards the middle of the field now. Over to McGrath. To Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Ball. Daniel Vicente managed to get it out of danger. And this is opportunity right here for Diacate if he wants it. Oh, He's got some space. this is good, too. Oh, one man. One on one. Goes towards the middle of the field. Does he have teammates? He's looking for somebody, but good reaction again. <sighs> he almost, I think he overshot it. I, I think he, ha he got a little too excited. But Belaz recovers it right now. He's going to go with the long shot, and oh, that one's going to go as well over little, the bar. Just a little high. Not as high as that first one, though. <laughs> yeah, the first one, I don't think they found the soccer ball yet on that one. So we're almost 20 minutes deep in this first half. What do you think? Well, that 1-0 is looking like gold right now for Albion San Diego. I think that was their first real scoring chance that they've had, and they were able to be efficient on that one and take the lead. So, again, I don't think there's going to be a lot of chances created by both teams, but when you do get that chance, you got to put it away, and they did. Yeah, absolutely. They and absolutely did. Ball gets out of bounds, and there'll be a throw-in for Albion San Diego. Little breeze out here. Too bad those players aren't feeling it because they are out in the sunshine. That'll be Harold Hansen with the throw in, looking for an open teammate. He's got Pelaez uh, right there if he wants him. Got Vicente a little bit more toward the center. Asking for some more movement. He gives it to Pelaez. He goes long. Diacate. Glenn Carrion. Oh, he keeps it at his feet. That's good. good. Rotation. He Varela right there. He's got space in the middle of the nice field again. Malongo on the side. And Gavara. the Guevara. Oh, excellent touch. Excellent touch. Guevara back There's to Varela. Varela. Back to Guevara. Now we see the ball get rotated backwards. Karim Sai. Nagelstad with the pressure right now. And the ball gets out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Albion San Diego. Tyler Guevara. Taking him his time, but he decides to go short with Varela. Back to Guevara. Rotates around to Jacob Hopp. Wide open. Plenty of time to think, move around, maneuver. Seems a little interesting on the part of Chattanooga. Jacob Hopp goes short. Carrion to Daniel Vicente. You can hear the fans helping the Albion team out. <laughs> I don't know if you heard them yelling, man, yeah. man, man. We can hear them all the way across the field, that's yeah. for sure. Now Varela. Has to go short back to Gavara. Daniel Vicente rotates the ball. They're in no hurry right now. Being efficient with their possession. Gavara. Daniel Carrion now. Finds Mayla Malongo. Varela back to Malongo. He's going to get the shot off, but it gets deflected. Jacob oh. Hopp, again wide open in the back. Runs over to Retrieve and over to Harold Hansen. Harold Hansen now. Back to Pelaez. Deciding what to do with it, decides to go all Beautiful the way around. Beautiful cross over to Kadim Say. That had a little bend on it. It sure did, yeah. Gavara. Carrion. Oh, nice juke. Keep oh. possession right there, and we get a whistle. You do. We might have. Oh, I thought for a second he was reaching for a yellow button that one, but he doesn't. And it'll be a free kick opportunity for Albion San Diego. That was, yeah, that was just an unfortunate collision. It happens sometimes. I see the replay. A little bit of contact right there, no call. And we oh, see yeah, that's more than unfortunate contact. Yeah, that was, that was close. As close as you can get without getting carded on that one. And we see the quick start of play. Albion con contains possession. Harold Hansen goes long. Good reaction by Chattanooga. Kadim Sai. I'm sorry. Oh, no, it was Diakate trying to get possession, but it'll be Is blown for a whistle. Free kick for Chattanooga. Decide to play short. Ball gets rotated around. And uh, oh, good job by Gavara recovering for Albion. Daniel Vicente. Excellent turn by Vicente. Oh, that, wow. No whistle. Ref gives, didn't the, see that. gives the advantage right there. Mayela Malongo. He's one on one now. He's two dis on one. Dispossessed right there by the second defender. And now Chattanooga. Starting to gain a little bit of momentum. I think the score line is forcing them to be more proactive in terms of how they're going to be booming forward now. Cerro. We got Rodriguez. And good job by Gavara recovering as he decides to go towards the middle of the field. But Chattanooga recovers. Nagelstad right there. Can he get to it? He does. He's across. A little too much, though. A little too much on it. 
He gets it over to Gray. Ball rotated all the way around again. Rodriguez, the bar right on them. Nobody there. It. It'll be a goal kick for Albion San Diego. But we see more movement and more passes and more control of possession by Chattanooga. Chattanooga. Definitely, at least more forward movement by them, absolutely. As Ben Roach decides to take his time right now. Yeah, let everybody kind of settle. Re retain some hydration in their bodies. Looks like he is going to go long again as the players start moving towards the middle of the field. Nice solid boot well past the midfield mark. Chattanooga wins that header. Let them get Vicente, fights for it. Now it's Nagelstad. We oh. get a whistle right there. A little bit of too much contact by Vicente. It'll be free kick for Chattanooga. Yeah, Vicente has a, a habit of doing that. I think it's something he needs to keep an eye on. And we were talking about last game, tactical fouls. You know, Nagelstad, you're never going to give somebody with that much until we see the replay right here. Daniel Vicente trying to make Ooh. a play for it, but he does make contact. Got his feet right out from under him. That's the last guy you want to give an opportunity on the breakaway or make a, a quick turn. Absolutely. And the last guy you probably want to give a free kick to, <laughs> too close to the net. Harold Hansen playing some strong, strong defense over there. Belize with the ball now. No whistle. Daniel Vicente. Goodness. Loose ball. Chattanooga right now in the middle of the field. Daniel Vicente. Vicente. Helps out. Good job. As we finally get a whistle right there. That'll be a free kick for Albion. That was a very strong contact right there. Sure, by Sure, absolutely. There's been a couple that the officials haven't seen, I think. It'll be executed by Kadim Say. I think they should put Pelias on it and just get that chip right up and over. He loves doing those long chips, that's for sure. And he's good at them. Now we get to start a play with Gavara. As he finds Varela back to Gavara. Patiently waiting for an open teammate. And he finds Daniel Vicente to Pablo Pelais. He got some room, but good recovery there by Chattanooga FC. Um, Let's try to start their counter attack. Cerro. We'll take the ball around. Get up to Robertson. All the way around. Now they got some space here. But the ball finds Milongo. And carry on. Now he got Barella. He's got some room as well. Can he get through the man? He does get the cross off. Too much on it. It'll be a goal kick. Yeah, there was a, he could have gone back to Gabara if he was able to see that. Gabara was wide open. He had my yellow Malongo for a second. We got a little second. hydration break. In the 27th minute, we get the first hydration break of the game. Very timely. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad the uh, officials are utilizing that. So what are your thoughts on the first 27 minutes? Obviously, Albion San Diego took advantage of that clear opportunity that they had. That put the ball away, Walter Varela, with a great shot. That bicycle yeah. kick that Miguel Malango exactly. tried. Exactly, that was a lovely attempt. Yeah, like I said, there were many Albion players there that had an opportunity, and uh, it was super difficult for Gonzalez to, you know, decide which one he should go for. Also gives Siri, Siri Koritoski a chance to go through some notes as we see the replay right here of the goal, the cross by Harold Hansen that finds Walter Varela, and again, nothing that the goalkeeper could do. No. He just took it. The second that ball hit his foot, he just took that shot. We see the replay once again. Great cross. That was a bicycle kick, like Chilena attempt that luckily didn't get deflected. And yeah, that defender right there tried to get his booty on it, but couldn't do it. Gonzalez couldn't do anything. It was a very, it. it was a very solid shot. Fast moving. Not even Alec Riding could have stopped that one. Let's just put it that way. Okay, I'll stop. Yeah. <laughs> the referee's having a chat right there, possibly talking about. Maybe the chippiness of the game, the conditions. It is getting a little bit warmer, actually, if you can believe it, from the start that we yeah. had. Yeah, it almost feels like there's less breeze, which is tragic. But once that sun goes down, it'll be uh, it'll be a little better. Again, Siri Kortoski having some words with the team, what he wants to see from them for the remainder of the half. 
And Ziggy's a good strategist. And this is, you know, even though it's a hydration break, it really is a good opportunity for both sides to, you know, it's almost like a little mini halftime. It's half halftime, quarter time to uh, have a strategy session and get people to re, uh, re remember where they're, what the original plan of attack was and maybe change some things up even. And honestly, if you look at it, after Albion took the lead, the game has been pretty even, you know? Even Chattanooga has got some possession more on their side, on this side of the field. They had a couple chances there, a couple crosses they didn't find Nagelstad, but still it's one of those teams that in the blink of an eye, they can score just ask Cal United. They scored uh, two goals on them in the first 12 minutes of the last game. Well, yeah, that's, uh, it, it, it's, that's any man's game. With the, that's why I love the sport so much because you can't take your eyes off of it. And, it, you know, there's no time on the clock. You can still get a goal, two goals. I've seen it happen. We referee starts the, the game. We see Chattanooga with possession. I'll be on tracking back. Got some contact there, no whistle. My young Malongo felt that for sure. Yeah, they were kind of midair and then he fell. And that burden contact. But once again, Chattanooga being patient, trying to find something towards the middle of the field. Sweet Carrion closing out. Ball regained by Gavara. Ball rotated okay. Varela. Varela. Now we get a whistle here, here, and we will get our first yellow card of the game on Chattanooga FC. McGrath, number 33. Alex McGrath. As we see the replay again. Yeah, definitely contact right there. He could have called it on the previous play that there was contact, but decided not to, and he calls it on McGrath now. So the first guy in the books for Chattanooga FC, and now the start of play, Jacob Hopp. Otero to Harold Hansen. Finds Belais. Yeah, I think the ref, or the official has seen quite a bit. Yeah, cut it with the shot. That's oh. gonna go just a little bit wide. It feels like Gonzalez might have needed to touch that. But he let it go out, so now they have a goal kick. Gonzalez quickly with the start of play. See my Yamalongo. Ball goes right rotated to the middle of the field. Again, Albion San Diego decides to track back a little bit, giving up the half of the field. Chattanooga patient with their attack. Now we see Harold Hansen closing out, recover the ball. Without hesitation, Harold Hansen is a machine. Yeah, caught that fighting for possession. A little more play on while sitting on the pitch, <laughs> overlooked by the official. Now Chattanooga right there, Robertson. Keeps it in. Looking for an open teammate. Barella trying to give chase on it. Goes short. Ball rotated around. Too much on that one. That'll be a goal, goal kick for Albion in San Diego. So here, the head coach for Chattanooga FC giving some orders for his team. It's Gavara feeling the pressure, goes back to Karim Sai. Say is one of those players that has uh, played for Ziggy Kortowski in the past, so it's a good reunion for them. Finds Varela. Varela got some room right here in the middle of the field. He goes short to Pelaez, rotates the ball to Diacate. Diacate goes short to Harold Hansen. Just a little bit behind him, but keep possession. Back to Pelaez. He's got the center right there. He does go with him. Overall, this match, uh, Al Albion's been pretty crisp with their passing. Right, a lot of short passes. A lot. Of, we talked about the, all the midfielders that Sigurd Koritowski decided to go with to start this game. Yeah, they're, they've been really good at switching sides. Like when they need to, they feel the pressure on one side, been they're able to off. get it. Been paying off. At Diacate's got possession right now. Tried to find Malongo, too much on it. Recovered by Cerro. Go Over short. to Gray. Gray has switched sides. He finds Nagostad. Nagostad, a little bit of room. Back to Gray. I see Barella closing out. That's interesting. At the hydration break, he's now playing on the right side. He was playing on the left side before. 
Maybe he's trying to think he can get through because he couldn't get past Harold Hansen. Thinking he can get past Gabara or Say. Ball goes rotated around. Pressure from Pelaz, pressure from Hansen, and Chattanooga keeps possession on the throw in. As we enter the 34th minute of play, Albion San Diego leading one to nothing right now on the goal by Walter Varela. I'm Hector Trujillo alongside Mary Beth Smuda. Hola. Bringing you the action via TVX video and 11 Sports. Thank you for joining us today. Carry on with pressure right now, regains it for his team. Daniel Vicente Ooh. goes long. He's trying to find the Akate. Can he get to it? Chattanooga does a good job closing it out. Absolutely. Albion did not give chase knowing that they weren't going to get it. So they, again, saving that precious energy. They still have a good 50 minutes of play left. Now Chattanooga patiently trying to find some open teammates right here. It's closer to over an hour of play left. Harold Long Hansen pass. gives run. Who will get there? Hansen does. Good job closing out using his body, and it'll be a goal kick for Chattanooga. Harold yep. Hansen, some words right there. Absolutely, and uh, Rodriguez over there. It looks like everybody switched sides. Referee make sure that doesn't go any further. And now Ben Roach. It's going to decide what to do. It decides to go short to Kadim Sai. Putting pressure on here. Nagelstad with some pressure right there. Kadim Sai says, no, thank you. Jacob Hopp, their health Hansen. Pelaez. Pelaez, oh, gets taken down by two Ooh, defenders. Loose ball, but Pelaez still fighting. Now he gets the whistle, and it'll be a free kick for Albion. Good job by Pelaez. They're fighting for possession. And being successful at it, though he lost it on there, he gets it back in the form of a free kick. We'll see what they have planned for this one. It might go long, but it'll be Jacob Hopp who executes the possession right now, the free kick. Again, taking a little time, not letting uh, this little break go to waste. Harold Hansen, back to Jacob Hopp. Again, Nagelstad. pressure from Nagelstad. Little English on that one. It was a good kick, but... Uh, Forces the out of bounds. That'll be a throw in for Chattanooga FC. Way back in their end of the pitch. Yeah. See what they decide to do with it. Get it right to oh, Nagelstadt. But they finally get a whistle from the referee. That'll be a free kick. He executes it quickly, but regained by Albion. Very quickly, Varela. All Varela's the way got some rim. Well, a little bit too much on that one. Lost just enough. <laughs> and now Gray starts to counterattack for Chattanooga. Good job by Daniel Vicente recovering. That was an excellent slide tackle. That was like picture perfect. Varela now has got some room, but decides to play it slow as Gray closes out. And it'll be a throw in for Albion San Diego. That might have been another strategy for Chattanooga right there versus not only Gray trying to get up here to get a goal on the left side versus being on the right side. Maybe he will be, or I'm sorry, on the right side versus the left side. Maybe he's also there to play a little more defense on. Ball back in play right now as we hear a whistle. Walter Varela over there. Great little, a little bit of a tug there on Walter Varela, and he's got some words for the official. A bit of frustration there. Let's see if we could guess what those words are. No, we can't do that. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep it PG rated for <laughs> now, please. Is this an FCC thing? <laughs> are they listening to this? We got two players there for Albion San Diego, Pelaez and Carrion. We might see a cross, one of those patent crosses by Pelaez with his left foot. As we see a bunch of players right now entering the box for both teams. Kadim size right there. Again, patiently just letting things get set up. Not wasting any energy. Plies decides to go short. To Varela. Varela who turns it immediately over to Harold Hansen. Now Harold Hansen has some room right there. He's going to go with the cross into the box. Chattanooga scrambles mm -hmm. to get as many guys in front of the net as possible. And then finds Gonzalez who's going to go quickly. Start the counter for Chattanooga FC. See if they can create a chance here. And they got some room right now on the side. Jacob sure Hopp is right there trying to close out the angle. Alongside with Daniel Vicente. Finds Nagelstad. Nagelstad almost takes the shot. Oh. He does. It gets deflected and regained by Walter Barella. Was that was he the one who got the block? I couldn't tell. Oh, no, no. Was it Hopp? Harold Hansen decides to go long for Diacate. But Chattanooga FC is right there. Carry on trying to get possession. Chattanooga FC wins it. And now they start from the side again. Oh, the Hansen trying to close out one on one. Oh, Rodriguez good move goes there. for the shot. It goes wide right. And it'll be a goal kick opportunity f 
for Albion San Diego. Ben Roach didn't even have to make a move on that one, which is good that he saw that. You can hear head coach Ziggy Kortoski over here, you know, talking about the change that uh, Chattanooga had made in the hydration break. So he's changing a little, he's giving a little strategy help to his team right here. Yeah, very definite instructions that he wants to see from his team in the final minutes. That is not unlike him whatsoever. As Pablo Pelaz recovers, out to Maela Malongo. Good job, but a free, another yellow card on a whistle. Uh, it also will be on gray. I think it'll be for re repetitive fouls, not so much the, inten the intensity of it. We have uh, Harold, or I'm sorry, Kareem Say coming over to hear the instructions here from Ziggy Kortoski. Kadim is uh, explaining what he sees on the pitch. You know, it's obviously you want to listen to your coach, but also when you're out there, it's a little bit of a different POV, right? And, uh, and 100 degree weather, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're trying to do your best, but at the same time, you, as you were trying saying, trying not oh. to die. <laughs> exactly, kind of pacing yourself for what's going to happen in the second half. So. If we hear the whistle of play right now, it'll be back to Guevara. Both takes the ball around to Karim Say. Jacob Hop. Back to Karim Say. Back over to Guevara. A little oh. bit of pressure here from Cerro. Oh, nice give and go with Guevara. And now we got Varela with some room right now. Again, decides not to take it. Gives it back to Guevara. Daniel Vicente. Back Jacob to Hop. Now he's got Pelaz right there. With his little chip. Oh, oh he I was hoping to, to see a chip. <laughs> <laughs> Harold Hansen, back to Pelaz. Yeah, it's uh, Albion is playing their 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 standard controlled. This is a this is a great team that we've been watching this season. They have definitely learned to know where the their men are and they know exactly how to get it across the pitch when they need to. Kadim say all the way around. Very controlled, very methodical. Here and comes now we Gray. See pressure Gray recovers the ball f and he's oh, got a man right there. Here comes Hop. Nagelstaff with a chance. Oh, Gets great reaction there by Hop. And the Albion players are asking for an offside that was not called. We we'll have see to if see we the replay. See it, yeah. yeah. It'll be a tough angle for us, but we'll see anyway if we can detect uh, what the Albion players are complaining about. That'll be a corner kick now. Here we go. As we see the replay, that was tough to tell from that angle, yeah. but Jacob Hopp was definitely not happy with uh, no flag. And McGrath will be the one executing the corner kick. He's got players in the box right now. Gray's one of them. Nagelstad. Pablo Play is marking up here on Cerro. Referee keeping a close eye right there and as he executes the corner kick. Goes eyes to go long, a little this bit is too long. Well, that's still there's still it's close enough. This is what ha happened in these last few games where they got a goal scored against them. Gabara closing off the shot on the cross. Kicks. Ball goes rotated ar around to Cerro. Plays it back. Yeah. Now we see some pressure from Varela. Deflection up in the air. Varela's right there. 50-50 ball. Two guys on him. And it'll be a throw-in for Chattanooga FC. It's executed quickly. Looks like uh, when uh, head coach Ziggy Kartowski was speaking to the team that they did a little switch around too. But Walter Varela seems to be playing a little more on the other side of the pitch right now. And a good job there by Harold Hansen again, getting his body in between the player and the ball. It'll be a goal kick for Albion San Diego. As we enter the 43rd minute, how much of time do you think it'll be added on here right now? We got the water break, we got a couple yellows. What do you think, two minutes? Yeah, I don't think any more than that because uh, otherwise it's been a really consistent match. It's been moving at a, at a really good pace. Got Ben Roach back here again, waiting for his mind to set up, taking his time. Goes long again. Beautiful boot, well past the midline. Malongo fighting for it, loose ball. Odiacate tried to get it, but was unable. Recovered by Chattanooga. Gray goes short. And the ball gets deflected out. It'll be a throw in for Chattanooga FC. Yeah, things are uh, a little different than prior to that break. Robertson with the throw in right now. 
Chattanooga is definitely applying more pressure, making way more moves forward to the net. Asking for more movement from his teammates. As we, as we say often when we're calling these matches, that you definitely don't want to go into the locker room at a deficit for halftime. Not today, that's for sure. Oh, a Any loose day. ball. Oh, Jacob Hop, run. Nagelstad goes down. He's asking for a penalty kick. No whistle was given. Yeah. Look, look more like incidental contact. Correct. I don't. He, that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> trying to keep my opinion to myself. <laughs> yes, I do believe it was uh, just the replay right a there. little over dramatic. Yeah. That is definitely not a penalty kick. Uh, yeah, drama. I, Hop's got his hands up. That's I mean, he did give a tug at the jersey. I, he, I did see that, but it definitely didn't take him to the ground. Chattanooga FC keeps possession right now. Middle of the field. Not a lot of movement from these players right now. That's now the ball gets rotated around to Gray. Gabara, oh, another gets great it job away by Gabara. But Robertson keeps it for his team right there with the shot. Too much on it. Goes over the crossbar. Goal kick for Albion San Diego. Right into the parking lot. Whoever owns that blue BMW, we are sorry. I'm kidding. It didn't hit a blue BMW. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we hear an alarm, alarm, it's not my car. I don't have an alarm. So. Okay, so we're back again with another corner kick for Albion San Diego. I hope Ben Roach uh, stretched out that right quad today. It's going to go along with the goal kick right now. All the way to the other side of the field. Chattanooga closes out. Cerro. They maintain possession. Ball goes rotated around. And Dixon over there with his captain's badge on also. Captain's armband. Gonzalez right now telling his teammates where he wants them to go. Robertson right now, possession. Nagelstad. Ball gets deflected. Keep Malongo's trying to get it. Gray has it right now. Guevara again right there. Three, three Albion defenders. Water, Barella, loose ball. Guevara keeps there we it. Go. Barella Rilla turns it. Can get through, and we're going to get another whistle, another yellow card. Oh, my goodness gracious. It'll be on Chattanooga FC, number four, Richard Dixon. I like how the official graciously waits for him to stand up before he gives them the yellow. And you could see during the water break, you saw the officials talking to each other. Maybe they were talking about all the chippiness that we were seeing and how Absolutely. they're going to call it after that. The official looks a little confused about the time. Here we go. Kadeem Sai with a free kick. An indirect free kick. Kadeem Sai goes all the way back to Ben Roach. Boot it. Decides to go long. Finds Harold Hansen. Maintains possession. Good job by him. He's got some room right now. Finds Diakate on the side. See what he can do one on one. Got two defenders on the mound. Plays it back Hell to Hanson Hansen with, with a nice cross. cross. Loose ball, and Chattanooga recovers it. And they go long, and we have... Oh, top again, one-on-one -on -one with a Chattanooga player. We have four defenders back for Albion San Diego. That's why they had to wait on that one. Yeah, that, well, they had to hustle back. And Jacob Hobb gives it back to Ben Roach. You can, yeah, and you can definitely tell Chattanooga is trying to get one in the net right now. And, you know, you don't blame them. Put a little pressure on Ben Roach there. Ben Roach scoops it up and says no. Telling his teammates he wants them to push forward a little bit. He's yeah. going to go long again. Ball up in the air. Oh, Contact, that was bad no luck. whistle. Barella wins it for Albion San Diego. Now to Pelaez. Back to Vicente. Back to Se. Rotated around to Gavara. Again, all the way back. Finds Ben Roach. Goes beautiful, along again. Beautiful. Oh, there was a little miscommunication there by Carrie. Yeah, Carrion. they almost ran into each other yeah. for a second. And now the throw in for Chattanooga FC. Boy, that could have turned out beautiful. As Gonzalez goes short. Towards the middle of the field right now. See a little bit of pressure again from Paula Pelaez. And Harold Hansen's there to help out. But Chattanooga recovers and goes all the way back around. Back to Gonzalez. It's going to go long on this one, it looks like he does. Right. He oh. Looking for Gray. Wh who got a tiny little head on him, but Gabara was right underneath him. Karim Sai wins it. Yeah, they're, they're unable to hold on to it. And Jacob Hop's going to go long again. 
little bit too much on. That'll be a throw in for Chattanooga FC. And I know that Albion is not taking this casually, but they it seems casual to them, doesn't it? You they have to be efficient right now, as you were saying. You have to be efficient. Thanks. As we hear the whistle, oh. end of the first half. And Albion San Diego with the 1-0 score over Chattanooga FC on the goal by Walter Barella. On the beautiful assist by Harold Hansen. Mary Beth, your thoughts on the first half? I think that the first half is exactly what we said it would be. Uh, possibly with the exception of there was a, a little more play in front of um, Chattanooga's net than possibly we anticipated. I thought it might be a little more even as far as that goes, but Albion has to be commended. Chattanooga's a very good team. They've been playing very well all season. So um, kudos to them. See the replay right here again, Harold Hansen. Bicycle kick attempt oh, by Oh, he'd have gotten his foot on that. Goal of the week if that would have happened. Yeah, well, had it gone in. I think had he gotten a foot on it, I don't know that it would have gone in. I Not think that Walter Barella wasn't beautiful, but uh, yeah, here we see it again, getting through the man, getting through the defender. Oh boy, he almost had that too. Barella, top corner. And nothing Gonzalez can do from Not that range. Not at all. He was, already, he was already looking behind him when that thing went in the net. So. And for the halftime, folks, we're going to have, as we were talking about during the pregame, the interview that we had with Alloween Diacate of Albion San Diego, second leading scorer of Nisa with nine goals. Great chance to talk to him, and we'll have that in a few seconds. Hope everybody gets to jump in the shower and take a nice cool 10 <laughs> minute, 10 second, just cool off. We'll see you uh, when we come back for the second half. Waiting for the whistle. Officials checking everybody, making sure they're ready to go. That'll be Chattanooga, brings the ball in. And now we get to start a play right now as they go long. All R the way to the side, Harold Hansen right there. And Pelais knocks it out. All the way back, trying to find Diacate. Oh, almost had him, too. See 50-50 possession right there, but Gray recovers for his team. That's another one of those things. You have that run, and you're sure that ball's going to make it to you, and it just doesn't. Tyler Guevara. Ball gets rotated backwards. Back to Tyler Guevara. He's going to go long to Mayel Malongo. Does it get through? No. Albion players asking for a handball, no whistle. Chattanooga rotates the ball around. We could just hear the PA announcer talking about how uh, Chattanooga had made a couple substitutions, so we'll see if that uh, helps them in their strategy. Frankie and Martinez right now, number five, goes all the way around, and now Gray. Ball out of bounds, that'll be a throw in for Chattanooga. Decides to go long on the throw-in. Gavara's That's right there. Bar there. But Chattanooga regains possession, and the ball gets deflected out. It'll yeah. be a corner kick for Chattanooga FC. Dangerous, danger. Yeah, look for a second. Gavara was going to win that ball, but um, good hustle by Chattanooga, and they get possession back for the corner. Yeah, there's a decidedly uh, high, different height uh, situation with Gavara and Gray, but Gavara's got just such good control. Looks like the corner kick will be executed by Cerro. So we see several players going into the box, including Walter Varela, trying to de play defender now. There's also quite a few open um, Chattanooga <laughs> gentlemen in the back here that you yeah. definitely want to keep an eye on. Chattanooga with the box, and we get a penalty call against Albion San Diego. Daniel Vicente with the contact inside the box on Nagelstad as he's still down on the ground. That is unfortunate for Albion. It'll be interesting to see the replay, but it looks like there was contact on that one. And Nagelstad eventually got his penalty kick after all. Rotation right there. Oh boy, that's a tough one. If anything, it might have been with the knee. I thought it was with the foot for a second, but now it'll be Nagelstad with the penalty kick. And we'll see what Ben Roach can do right here. If he, if He's he can stopped block it. a few this season so far already, so it's not an improbable situation. Nagelstad going Mentally for his 15th goal of the season, if he can convert this. Referee blows the whistle. Telling the players right now. And he scores the goal! Chattanooga FC on the penalty kick. Marcus Nagelstad ties the game 1-1. Early in the second half, and now we got a whole new ball game, Mary Beth. 
Absolutely, and you saw Ben Roach read it right, but he just wasn't able to get over there far enough. He went, uh, Nagelstadt went for the lower left corner, or like the mid to lower left corner, right corner. Not and a lot of pace, but great positioning by that penalty kick shot. Yeah, it just almost seems like the fact that Ben Roach read it correctly, it just was like, just get a little more gumption over there. Now we see Albion on the counter, and there'll be a throw in for Albion San Diego. Let's see what they can do. Start of the second half. Tyler Guevara looking for an open teammate. Goes to Mayela Malongo. Two guys on him. We see some contact here. No whistle. He keeps possession. Finds Walter Varela. Can he get a shot off? He does. It gets deflected backwards. And now Cerro wins possession for Chattanooga FC. Gray. Goes to Gray. We get more contact. No whistle again. Carry on trying to track the ball back. Okay, Albion's going to really need to be careful with this. Barela right now finding oh, a little bit too much on that one. And now Gray has possession back. Good close out by Carreon. I'm sorry, Cavara. Finds Walter Varela. He's got some room right there. Goes short with the pass that gets intercepted. Now Cerro back to Gray. Great with possession again. Good close out by Vicente. Here we go. Carreon. To Pula. Oh, Pula is my, Pula my is right there. He loses possession. It looked like it was getting away from him. He was just trying to get it back a little bit, but wasn't unable to do so. Ball goes rotated all the way around. Chattanooga FC. Might see a cross here into the box. No, he decides to play it safe. And now the ball gets through to Gray. He's got a chance here at an angle. Will he get the shot off? The deflection. And Harold Hansen recovers. Yep. He, uh, and he finds the Akate. He's streaking down open. the field. One on one. What can he do? He's got a defender on him. Now he's got, he's four got players several on defenders him. on him. Gets oh. the shot off. Unable to get it toward the net, though, but. Yeah, he was all by himself right there. He had to decide to do something. He did it with the shot. As we see the replay right here of the penalty kick, looks like he did get him with the foot right there, maybe. Ben Roach did guess right, oh, as you were saying. Oh, so close, so close. Almost got a fingertip on it, but Almost. great location there. Great location, yeah. It well, didn't have a ton of speed, though. Had Ben been able to get over there, he might have been able to stop it. Ball back to McGrath now. Going straight forward down the middle. Diakate gets All by, by Diakate. Wow, he just Decides got past go short. six Albion and guys. And he gets through. Harold Hansen, one-on-one. -on -one. Short pass. Kadim say knocks okay. it out. And now Carrion tries to win it, but Chattanooga gets there first. Ball up in the air, held Hansen to Pelaez. Play right on him, back to Hansen. Starts to go long, Ooh. and he finds Diakate, two guys on him. And then we get a whistle, we get a free kick, and we get not a happy reaction by Chattanooga FC. And we're gonna get another yellow card, it looks like this will be against Pablo Pelaez, it looks like for Albion San Diego. A little bit too much complaining, apparently. Got to be careful. This is a, too important of a match to get Should a yellow card for that kind of stuff. Replay right there. Two guys on Diakate goes down, and Pelaez makes contact with the Chattanooga FC player. That's what he got the yellow for. That'll be Jacob Hop starting possession to Harold Hansen. Go short to Pelaez. Receive contact, another free kick for Albion San Diego. Go short to Harold Hansen. Back to Pelias. Both teams definitely playing with some much, much more intensity. I would say triple the intensity they were playing in the first half. All the way around, Varela. Varela is able to hold on to it. Has to go backwards. Gives it to Vicente. Vicente scoots able it to over. Just to get his foot on it, otherwise Chattanooga might have had a chance right there. We have another whistle, and this one will be against Chattanooga FC for contact Vicente's with Daniel Vicente. Vicente's It'll be on, on the ground. I'm sorry, on Nagelstad. Oh. Yeah, Vicente and Nagelstad have been going at it the whole game, and now... Let's, let's see if we can uh, see a replay on this and see what happened. As we will see the replay in a second. Here it is. Varela Vicente gets to it first, and you see Ooh, the contact there. Oh, steps on him. Ooh, 
It was looking like it wasn't on purpose, obviously. Yeah, and incidental. He was but on the still, go. when you make contact with cleats, you're probably not going to get the benefit Ooh, of the doubt on that goodness one. goodness gracious. That was uh, full force with that foot, too. So we see the ball getting back into play now. All the way around to Harold Hansen. Harold up to Carreon, who gets good reaction it, but then by Chattanooga's defenders, and it'll be a throw in for Albion San Diego. Harold Hansen to execute it. Decides to give it to Jacob Hopp. So we see several players into the box right now. For Albion San Diego, see if they can create an opportunity here. Mayela Malango is going backwards now, back into the box. Calling direct, some directed by Hop. Absolutely, calling some strategy here. Trying to, to go along with the throw in. Loose ball up in the air. Barella oh. with a bicycle kick. Chilena. Albion San Diego looking for a deflection, corner kick. Referee gives none. Wow. The Chattanooga player just kicked that ball over. I think that's a... Referee didn't see him, though. Yeah, absolutely. For him. Wow, that, should, that would be a yellow card for sure. As Chattanooga regains possession right now, plays short on their side of the field. You can hear a lot of chatter on the sidelines over here concerning those plays. Yes, you were saying the intensity level definitely ratcheting, ratcheting up now in the second half. Absolutely. As we see Cerro now with the ball. Good coverage right there by Karim Say. We see another yellow card we about to be issued right now. Karim Say making too much contact according to the official. Yeah, and he's trying to do his best to maintain the uh, the tempo of the game right now, but we see a lot of contact. This is the one that we saw a second ago. The, yeah, the Chattanooga FC player looks like he did not make contact on that one, didn't they get, did not get deflected. So now Chattanooga is going to start on the free kick. Might go long into the box right here. We'll see what they have planned. They're talking it over right now. Definitely need to, uh, Ben Roach needs to keep on his toes here. McGrath is right there with Cerro. See what they decide to do here. It might be the left foot or the right foot of. They're and they switched to play short. It. Yeah. McGrath's got some room here. Can he get over? He does. Good intervention by Daniel Vicente. Absolutely. His Roach was on the ground. Pablo Pelaez now goes long to Mayela Malongo, but it's recovered by Chattanooga FC. We see some contact, no whistle. Loose ball, it'll be a throw in for Albion San Diego. Lennon Carrion is a little a scrapper there. Yeah, he was in between three Chattanooga players, was able to get the throw in. Tyler Guevara goes around to Daniel Vicente. Over to Harold Hansen. He's got some room right now if he wants it, one on one, he gets through. Gets it over to Diacate, who Pablo Pelaez now trying to find a teammate, goes all the way around. Some good footwork by Albion right there, and also equally good pressure from uh, Chattanooga. Now Walter Barella back to Tyler Guevara. Daniel Vicente short. Karim Sai, see some pressure here for Chattanooga, trying to recover the ball, maybe create an opportunity. Ben Roach over to Jacob Hawk. As the announcer Miles Davis likes to say, hop. <laughs> Tyler Guevara looking for an open teammate. Decides to go short again. Carrion to Vicente. Vicente's going to go to Health Hansen right now. Able to. Oh, Can't let's it, it roll out. Oh, goodness. It'll I, be a throw in right now. I think he FC. thought he had a little more. It'll be executed by Ward. To Jones, to McGrath. Cross over to Cerro. Middle of the field, goes backwards. Now they got some room right now in the middle of the field. As Albion tracks back, finds Gray. One on one with Guevara. Now he's got some help from Varela. Ball gets through. McGrath. Thought about the shot for a second, back to Gray. Robinson. And Guevara closing, trying to close out. Cerro. With his left foot, what can he do? Trying to turn it, there's Nagelstadt. Back to Gray. 
Lots Gets the cross in, the shot, and the goal. Chattanooga FC. Number 33, Alex McGrath, gives them the lead in the 59th minute. And just like that, the visitors have the 2-1 to one lead as we see the replay right here, Mary Beth. Oh, yeah, Ben Roach just was not on the mark for that one. Great patience right there. You saw a lot of short passes. They could have taken the shot earlier from long distance, decided to keep playing it short until they found the open teammate. McGrath puts it away with a beautiful header. And now Albion has some work to do in the final 30 minutes of the match. Yeah, that was uh, there was a lot of action in front of that net, and you can definitely tell that uh, Chattanooga has changed their strategy a lot and they've settled a little bit more than they were in the first half able to find their man now Albion starts their counter Walter Varela ball gets intercepted by Chattanooga Cerro goes long ball up in the air they maintain possession Gray decides to play short back to Gray Gavara right there. He's got Sarah if he wants him. But good close up by Daniel Vicente. And it'll be a goal kick for Albion San Diego. Now, still plenty of time left, 30 minutes as we were saying. But it's definitely one of those things that the more the clock continues to go with Chattanooga FC in the lead, the more pressure they're going to start to feel. So, Absolutely, and it's already a pretty chippy half. So, uh, you know, they're, they definitely want to watch out. We just had a flurry of yellow cards on both sides of the pitch. And uh, we got to watch out. Nobody wants to end up down the man. Definitely the stage of the game where you want to keep your cool because going down the man would be uh, not a good thing right now, especially with the score 2-1. to one. Absolutely, especially the way the table changed in the middle of the afternoon today. So... Ben Roach rotates it around. And now Albion starts their counter slowly. Gavara gets through Gray. Does a nice little juke around him right up he to Malongo. Malongo. He's got some room right there. Diacate. What is he going to do? He goes short. Oh. oh, great intervention. That ball looked like it was going to find the corner right there. That was Ward who was able to get that boot on it. I thought he might have almost scored on himself. I wasn't sure where that ball was going. Last second but intervention by Ward because Gonzalez wasn't even close to it right there. That was a a Here we go, Malongo over to Diacate. Yeah, absolutely great. Or, uh, Gonzalez is way off his mark also. Just now Albion's going to execute the corner kick right now. Carrion. Got some numbers here for Albion in the box. You got hopped up there. Got all the tall guys out there. Also Daniel Vicente. Cutting say. Ball gets through. But Gonzalez, Gonzalez is right there. It. Oh. See some contact right now. Referee okay, just having a that word. That was incidental. That was incidental. Telling Karim Sai. Be very careful. Uh, is Karim Sai with a yellow right now? I believe so. That's probably why he didn't pull the second yellow, but he did have a word for him. I made a motion not to do that again, so. Gonzalez is about to start play for Chattanooga FC. Telling his men to move down. He's gonna go long on this one. And he didn't. Took it short. Little uh, trickery. I see some pressure from Diacate. Forcing the ball all the way around. Gray. And Gabara again uh, with one each on other. One. Oh, Gabara does a great job of Gray still with the ball, but good job by Guevara getting in between Gabara the ball and the man. Guevara got it from him. Oh, but tries to get it to Malongo and doesn't have enough juice. Loose, loose ball, still up for grabs. Oh, and now Malongo Malongo's has it. Malongo's got some room. He's got Varela on his back, and Diacate is heading toward the center. Still with possession, getting through. He's got a wow. chance for the shot Shoot if it. he wants it. Oh, oh, and it just goes wide. Great job by him creating some space out of nothing. Unfortunately, he just went wide. And I think that's what we're going to see for the rest of the half, Mary Beth. Uh, obviously, Albion is down one goal, and they're going to push their lines forward, see if they can get the tying goal, maybe win it at the end. Absolutely. Uh, and like we said, they just, both teams seem to be really in a place of recognizing the other team and being able to move around them and, uh, you know, make some action happen on both sides. It's really great play. 
I don't think anybody's any one side is playing stronger than the other right now. Chattanooga here on their side of the field. See again some pressure. Diakate forcing the ball all the way around. Chattanooga still with possession right here. Good job maintaining in between two defenders. Cerro has a turn there. Oh, can't get it off. Has to get it back to Ward. Ward going towards the middle. Trying to find an open teammate. Sent it over to. Now the ball into the box right there. Nagelstad gets the shot off. Hits the, uh, hits the right side of the net on the outside. Not a bad chance there by Chattanooga FC. Tough angle for him, but he got the shot off. It'll be start of the play. Now Javier on San Diego. Held Hansen. Finds Daniel Vicente. Gets the ball almost through. Trying to find Mayel Malango. And now Gray. We see some contact. We're going to see another yellow card right there. And it'll be the second yellow for Karim Say. And now Albion San Diego. What they could not afford to have happen. They go down the man. He was, in fact, already on the yellow. Hands over his captain's badge. Gives it to Daniel Vicente. Let's see the contact right here. Oh, goodness. Having some words with the referee on the way out. But definitely a tough situation now. Not impossible, Mary Beth, but definitely being a man down against Chattanooga FC. Being a goal down, they're going to have to pull out something out of the playbook to see if they can get back in this and tie the game. Absolutely. Uh, they, I mean, it's difficult to not play chippy physical ball when the other side is playing it. You know, it's, so it's a very, very fine line to be able to win physical battles and not get cards on it. Ward gets through. Harold Hansen right there. There's some contact, no whistle. Nagelstad, middle of the field. Good Too job much. closing out by Varela. It'll be a throw-in for Albion San Diego. As we hear another whistle. A little whistle. substitution, a couple of substitutions coming up for Albion San, San Diego here. Indeed, we'll see what the substitutions are. We've got uh, uh, Puga going in, it looks like Mitchell and uh, Bezeas. And Peleas and Carrion coming out. Some fresh legs in for Ziggy Koritoski, Edward Puga, and Ernest Mitchell coming in. Bella is coming out. He also has a yellow, so it's obviously one of the things that Ziggy Koritoski had in the back of his head. He cannot lose another player right now. That would be pretty much the end of the game right there. Absolutely. Cerro gives it back. Ball goes all the way around. Dixon. Chattanooga once again being very patient with their possession. They find Cerro, Dixon. Harold Hansen right there, one on one. Good job by Jacob Hopp, taking the ball all the way back. Goes back to, to Martinez and then over to Stripling. Diacate trying to give a little challenge up here Good job to Martinez. Ward right now. Chips it in. Flat goes up, offside. He knew it too. <laughs> that was a good idea though. We just a couple steps offside on that one. Now Ben Roach in a hurry to start action. Ernest Mitchell just in the game right now. Finds Miguel Malongo. One on one. Got Walter Varela right there, but decides to go long and loses possession. Gray, two guys on him, decides to go back. Now Chattanooga FC in back to no Gungo. hurry whatsoever. None whatsoever. Ward, got some room to play with. Looking for an open teammate. Decides to play short, back to Ward. See pressure here by Walter Varela. Jacob Hop's gonna track that one down. 
Nothing that Nagelstad can do on that one. And then Roach with the goal kick. Edward Puga. Ernest Mitchell. To Jacob Hawk back to Mitchell. Over to uh, Puga. Back over to Gabara. Ernest Mitchell, we see some pressure again from Chattanooga FC. Ball gets through. To Diacate. Diacate. He's, got, He's got Varela right there. See what he can do. He's got some space. He finds oh, Harold, Harold Hansen. Hansen. Uh, Hansen. Oh, stay. Oh, Harold Hansen gets dispossessed. Ball gets loose. Oh. It'll be it's a, a goal kick. kick. It'll oh, be a goal kick. Sorry, it looked like it went yeah, off of for the... for a second uh, it did, but now it'll be Gonzalez. Goal kick. See what he uh, decides to do on that one. See if we can get a shot of that moon coming up over those hills over there. Oh, it does look beautiful over there. Yeah. Quite beautiful. Here we go. Back in uh, play here. We've got McGrath taking it over to the right side there. See a little bit of pressure from Ayala Malongo. Gray, one on one with Guevara. That's been the battle all day long. Abs oh, takes Guevara down. Decides to keep possession and give advantage. No whistle. And it'll be a goal kick for Albion San Diego. The official, the side official did wave his flag there. Now Edward Puga. Back to Ernest Mitchell. See some closing out there by Chattanooga. Finds his teammate Diacate. Mayela Malongo. Diacate heading toward the center. Varela on his right side. Oh, nice There's little juke pass. Now it finds Harold Hansen. Oh, that was a missed opportunity by Chattanooga right there. His, he could have had that. Varela. Mayela Malongo, Varela. Can oh. he get through? Great reaction there. Varela was about to touch the ball, perhaps right. get a shutout, and McGrath was right there on the spot. It'll be a corner kick for Albion San Diego. So we see a little bit of more shade right now on the pitch. Oh, definitely helping out the players right now. Absolutely. The temperature has definitely dropped a little bit. They can probably breathe a little bit. Here we go, Walter Varela about to take this shot. Right foot for Varela with the corner. Ball gets through, deflected, and it's Nagelstad starting the counter right now. But Mitchell makes Jones, gives chase. Two guys on him. Good job by Jacob Hop closing out. Over to Harold Hansen, Hansen, keeps it in. Ball gets knocked out. It'll be a throw in for Albion San Diego. Jacob Hop with the long arms. Oh, nope, Harold Just Hansen's going to take it. Oh, there's Hear a whistle. Chattanooga. Looks like it could be a water break right now, another hydration break. Yeah, Chattanooga has uh, got a gentleman on the ground there. Brit, well, Britt Jones is uh, still on one knee. He might definitely need some. He's back up now. That's good to see. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, after considering what happened uh, with the last hydration break, as far as things on the pitch, like this could uh, this could be the turn Albion needs. They they definitely need. At, at the least a draw but see the replay right here this is the goal the he beautiful header by McGrath nothing that uh, Ben Roach could do on that one no nah, it just skimmed off his head too that was the perfect kind of head too he just kind of guided it in it was in the right trajectory and they showed a lot of patience in that possession they could have taken the long range shot a couple of times but decided to play it short find the open guy and it took advantage for the two to one lead let's we'll see what Ziggy Koritowski has planned right now talking to his players still There'll be about 18 minutes left, plus at a time. As we saw, oh, there's the moon. There it is, right there. It's beautiful. Look at that shot. Ooh, nice one. We get the sun and the moon at the same time here in San Diego, folks. It's a beautiful, beautiful evening here in uh, Southern California, Cal State San Marcos, the cage. <laughs> I'm glad it's not like a real cage. I wouldn't. Want, I don't want to feel trapped. And Look if you're Sergey Koritowski, you. Basically, you have no control right now in terms of the, the red card that happened. You know, it was a second yellow. Correct. You're a man down. But now you got to focus on what you have ahead in terms of time, in terms of possession. Every possession is going to be key for Albion San Diego. Absolutely. And, uh, again, they realize that, and it feels like they did turn the pressure around a little bit uh, after that second goal happened. And so it will be interesting to see what happens after this hydration break and having only 10 men on the pitch. 
see some words being exchanged, ideas about how they're going to finish up this second half. Maela Malongo with Puga and Daniel Vicente. Here we go, the whistle has sounded. See the throw in now executed by Harold Hansen. Finds Edward Puga. Oh, nice. Diacate. Diacate. Puga finds Varela. Varela's got some room. Doesn't get through. But we hear a whistle. And it'll be a free kick opportunity here for Albion San Diego. The referee saw something. That'll be Tyre Guevara. They're having a little uh, interesting chat out there about the inflation of the ball. Guess they decided that one was not firm enough. Got a new ball in there. Cabarra's getting ready to sizing up what's going on in front of the net. He's got definitely a lot of teammates in there, a lot of movement. A lot Miss of tall teammates too, that doesn't hurt things. Vicente as well, Diacate, goes with the cross. Good reaction, loose ball, still loose. Diacate able to get a boot on it, but not Almost able to control. Almost gets it, Cerro knocks it out. A danger, Hansen back in. Gonzalez calls for it. Diacate pressures until he picks it up. Good play. I like to see that happen. I don't like to see keepers get carte blanche. Yeah, if you're Albion San Diego, you definitely want to hurry up a play here. Every second counts for them. Absolutely. So we see Dixon finds Ward. Focus right to rotate around Martinez. Back to Ward. He's got some room now. Ward uh, would be probably considered the savior of the day for uh, long Chattanooga. pass gets through. Harold Hansen right Gibbs there gets Chase, deflected. Chase gets control. Oh, they still keep got still it. in. Still in balance, yeah. It almost looked for a second it was going to go out. And now no, we got a whistle okay. free kick for Albion San Diego. Good job by Hansen keeping the ball in balance. See a little bit of that cheapiness that we were talking about ago and the referee lets them play on. Yeah, I think he understands. The circumstances. Of yeah, the game. he's not going to stop it. He just has to maintain. Can't let it get too. Out of control, absolutely. We're down to five on five. <laughs> Edward Puga, Tyler Guevara, Mayela Malongo between two players, gets through. Oh, wow. Finds Ooh. the Acate. We hear another whistle right here. Two Albion players on the pitch at this point. We'll see what the referee, he's going to have a talk with McGrath. You can hear, I don't know if you can hear head coach Ziggy Kortoski having some opinion mm -hmm. about what's about to happen here. You can hear him say it was the same play that um, there was a second yellow for Kareem Saez. You see the replay right here? Let me go. Mayela Malongo gets the ball Ooh, through. Oh, oh, that's almost a red on its own. Tyler Gabara and entering the game number five, Chris Lorente. Lorente coming into the game for Tyler Gabara. I'm sure Gabara's just beat, but he played so well against that man who was much, much larger than him. May we get some size here with Lorente as well, perhaps on the free kick opportunities, the corner kicks that might be coming. So no cards were pulled at all on that. And I think that's what, like you said, Siggy Kortoski was not there happy with that. There were two Albion players on the pitch. Wow, that's interesting. Well, at least they get a chance right here to maybe make something happen. The referee blows the whistle, and it's not yet, actually. He's going to, we're going to see Giacate exiting the field. Number nine, Giacate. Not pleased about it. And here we have the newest member. Making his Albion San Diego debut. Jeffrey Otto. Jeffrey Otto. Uh, two, it sounds like it's pronounced. <laughs> yeah, and Lorente with a the chance there. Ball gets deflected out. It'll be a goal kick, but he came in first he's play and he gets a touch on it. He's so new, he doesn't have his name on a jersey yet, just a number. <laughs> and uh, as we were discussing where he played before, aside from Atlanta United, he also was playing in the uh, now defunct Valley United team. So that's a good pickup for Albion San Diego. He loose ball, maintained possession by Ward. Back to Martinez. Goes long, gets over Hansen. Daniel Vicente wins it back. Find the ball, find the 
Uh, Walter Varela gets through the man, but can't keep possession. It'll be a throw in for Chattanooga FC. We are. Everybody's kind of taking their their time right now. Ward executes the throw in. Loose ball right now. Jacob Stad almost gets to it. Chattanooga keeps possession. Finds Gray one on one with Mitchell with the shot. Gets deflected out. It'll be a corner kick for Chattanooga FC. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting now. We got to watch all these new players that hit the pitch kind of find their p momentum, and there isn't a lot of time left to do that. So, We've got O2 in the back here, taking care of these two uh, Chattanooga stragglers, just making sure if the ball happens to make it back there. As we see, McGrath right there, and yeah, Cerro goes short to McGrath. Ball rotates all the way around. Back That's to Cerro. Interesting strategy on their part, I think. Cross. Ball deflected by Vicente. Oh. Still in the box right there, Gray. Robertson was unable to do it. Now Gray's giving chase to Harold Hansen. Harold Hansen maintains control coming up. Oh, the and a whistle did, blows. Did, did leave the touch line. Did. So it's, is that a corner again? It is a corner. Again, Chattanooga FC in no hurry to execute the corner kick. They know time is on their side. They got the lead. They're a player up. And it'll be McGrath with the corner kick. See if they're going to go short or long with it. Looks like they're going to go Ward. short again. He's got Cerro right there if he wants him. Cerro with the cross into the box. The Lorente flat. gets a head ball on it. and he sent this still up in the air. Ward right there. Boots it in front of the net. Harold Hansen. Ball with oh, a shot ben right Roach. to Ben Roach. Who just takes no time. Gets it right up to Mel Melly Malongo. Who takes it up the left side. Melly Malongo ball gets deflected out. And gets, it'll be a throw Gets in. it right back to himself. So we see Edward Puga right now. Need to see some gray jerseys up there. Everybody's tired. Oh, two. Back to Melly Malongo. Trying to find a teammate right there. He finds Vicente. Looking for Harold Hansen, he's wide open. There's Va Varela over there. He's got Varela, too much on that one. And now Nagelstad starts the, starts the counter attack for Chattanooga FC. Ball finds Gray. Edward Puga with some pressure. Ball gets rotated all the way around, all the way back. Gonzalez, Martinez, McGrath. Trying to get a little uh, strategy Gray going. Offside. There'll be a possession for Albion San Diego. As we see another substitution coming in for Albion. Jonathan Basais. For uh, Walter, Walter Barilla. Barilla. Some fresh legs coming in. And Walter, or I'm sorry, Johnny Bazias has got some fast wheels too, so this might be a good change for Albion. Albion. He's a good shot taker also. Ball back in play. Up in the air, Puga fighting for it as we see a whistle. Oh dear. Let's see if we can see what happened here. There was contact there apparently. Maya Malongo telling the player for Chattanooga it wasn't that bad, but we'll see from the replay if it was. Right there, Pua comes in. I think he did catch him with the cleats a little bit with the raised foot. It didn't look like it was that much contact, though. I, know I c couldn't quite tell where they he got him. Looks like they're having a lot of trouble finding a good ball. I wonder what the situation is with that. Does the humidity have make a difference on it, it you think? It could, definitely. All right, we have a free kick here for Chattanooga. As we see more Albion players pushing their lines forward, trying to get any possession they can, create any chances in the final few minutes. Ball back in play. Torrente gets it back, finds Harold Hansen, see if they can do something with this one. It's got some room. Cross into the box. Oh, 
And now the ball finds Nagelstad as Vicente makes chase. Good job by him deflecting nice out of bounds. Nice tackle. That'll be a throw in for Chattanooga FC. Paul, see the replay right here on the cross from Hansen. Ooh. We heard some uh, players and the coaching staff asking for something being called right there. I don't think there was enough there to, to no. blow for a penalty kick. I don't think so either. He definitely wasn't going for the man. He just was tripped. No whistle there either. And Puga can't get to the ball. Gray gives it back. McGrath. Nagelstad, he's got an angle, he's got a chance. Oh, Good job ben by Ben Roach. Roach. Oh, among all those feet, I actually think he took down. Lorente is down. Yeah, he's definitely. I think he in got pain. caught in the melee with uh, Ben Roach he's there. He's reaching for his ankle right there. I think it was incidental, <laughs> friendly fire situation. Absolutely, and, and there's no way Roach couldn't not do what he did. Looks like he's trying did. to get up now. Walking oh, very gingerly. Oh, no, 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 no. Here See the replay right here, McGrath with the chance, good close out. Yeah, he yeah, was right was in between Roach. both players. Mm -hmm. Right in between both players right there. Does he get sandwiched? I think Roach might have inadvertently caught him with his body. Sure, absolutely. See the play continue. Chattanooga FC, Cerro. Lorente is standing up, so that's good. Not limping. See the ball get deflected. It'll be another corner kick for Chattanooga FC. And all this time that keeps going, ticking by. Definitely benefiting the visitors. Who with a win right now would maintain their second place spot in the NISA standings. Ma Michigan Stars winning their match earlier against LA Force. Would remain at number three. And now be on with stay at number four if things stayed the way they are. But there's still a few minutes left in the game. And Cerro gives it, passes it around see some pressure here or two oh. good job by Puga regaining the ball for Albion San Diego Albion's War got trying to get it back he gets he gets the flag that'll be a throw in for Albion Albion's got some good defense going on but they really need to rally the offense yeah and Chattanooga's happy keeping the ball on that side of the field oh absolutely Even they, if they are. don't create any real chances to score here whistle right now Jacob Hopp looking for a teammate. Gives it a good toss, but I, uh, that was probably the not the best position to throw that. But the shot goes Just up over. and over under the watchful eye of Ben Roach as he quick, quickly starts the play for Albion. Mitchell to Jacob Hopp, Daniel Vicente. Goes long. Harold Hansen still showing some legs right there. Serious With the legs. Cross, gets oh, through. over to Mayala Malongo. Mayala Malongo's right there on the side. Able Finds to control Puga. it. Back to Malongo. Uh, got a player on him. O2 is cross. looking for it. O2 is looking for a little Mayala pass. Malongo getting through again. Finds With Johnny Bezaez over to Daniel Vicente. Up oh. to Harold Hansen. Hopefully Harold Hansen. Too Hansen's much on oh. it. For a second there, it looked like Malongo's going to take the shot, but just didn't have too much space on him. Good job by Chad. Yeah, O2 out. was really looking for it too. I it's interesting, Chattanooga is still pretty chippy in their winning. Well, the referee or the uh, sideline ref is telling him to hurry up, and the ref Chattanooga's were, we're really no hurry to hurry up. Thank you very much. You're not, but that's not how the match works. And again, it'll be decided. I don't know how many minutes will be added on. Probably four or five minutes at least. Absolutely. I mean, you're allowed a certain amount of slow momentum but you can't delay a game Ben Roach goes long up in the air Jonathan Dixon Basais. is able to get it and Puga finds Mayela Malongo Ma all these players might be so tired right now oh I'm sure he's trying to create something out of nothing gets some space gets the shot off oh my goodness just, just goes left. wide Great effort by him creating something out of nothing in terms of space. Gonzalez didn't even make a move for it either because it didn't seem like it was that far away from the net. Again, Gonzalez pointing as if he's going to go long again, but decides to go short. Martinez being chased by Otu. Harold Hansen closing out. Needs to be careful right there. 
Needs to be careful right there. Vicente needs, yeah, careful with that pushing. Gotta get a yellow card. You could almost sense right there the frustration coming on when he couldn't get to the ball. Went right through the player and the yellow card issued. Number 45 of the Albion San Diego, Harold Hansen. Martinez having a few words with the referee. As he checks his clock right now. Yep, approximately two in regulation. Yeah, I'm expecting at least four minutes being added on. There's yeah, been a lot three of or four. Yeah, this, ref this official doesn't seem uh, too eager to keep it going along, but at least now the pitch is completely uncovered by the sun, shaded. Good job by Mitchell. We see a whistle, free kick for Albion San Diego. Ben Roach takes it quickly, gets it right up to... Uh, Ayala Malongo. Takes he's it directly up the left some side. Some space, he's got Puga right there. He goes long, good closeout. Oh, two now with the ball. See what he can do, one-on-one -on -one defender on him. Oh, wow, keeps it at his feet. That's some Finds nice... Malongo. Can he create something? He goes down, no whistle. Uh, and Gray Bezaias. keeps it with possession for Chattanooga FC. Oh, Bazayas. That, that free kick now. Oh, sorry, it'll be... A throw-in. Hear a whistle. Have we another substitution right now coming in? For Chattanooga. This will be for Chattanooga FC. As we see the play right here where Harold Hansen came right through the player, right in front of the referee, actually. So it's kind of... Kind of unfortunate on that one. Yeah. As we see contact again, Basayas making contact with Gray. Gray goes down. Referee comes in quickly. We see again words being exchanged. Referee trying to keep control of the match right now towards the end. As Gray will be the player subbed out. Yeah, Albion has to definitely keep their cool. I know they're down a man and down by a goal, but there's still time left. This is not being helpful for their cause right now. You see right there, Basayas. Oof. I think Gray made a lot of, uh, of that right there too as well, so. Ball gets back, thrown back to the Chattanooga players. Alex Hernandez is going in for Gray. We still haven't heard yet how much time will be added on in the second half. We're officially in stoppage time. Chattanooga FC has made a substitution in the 90th minute. One minute, right? Seven. Well, Goodness. Seven minutes. Well, seven minutes. I was way off on that one. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. Both of us were. So still plenty of time for Albion to try and get the tying score here. A tie would definitely feel like a win right now, being a man down. But Chattanooga... A win would definitely feel more like a win. Albion's got a little playing smart, not hard, too, getting them called offside. That's been several this half. Lorente de Puga. The two blonde beauties. <laughs> Natural blondes, of course. Ah, I was going to say. Daniel yeah. Vicente and all the Chattanooga players on their side of the field practically now. He's got Mitchell with his foot on it. Back to Vicente. Goes all the way around it's again. Jacob Hop. Puga. Puga with a good turn. Here we go. Harold Hansen. O2 Ooh. to Hansen. Oh, O2. Nice. Back to O2. That was a nice little touch. Chattanooga doing their best to close off the lanes right here, forcing the ball all the way back. Lorente to Vicente. Mitchell. See movement here, Bambasayas. Ball in, easily deflected out. Hop, hop with the header. Loose and ball. Another header up in by the air. Hernandez, who just came in. Mitchell recovers it. Lorente, Lorente all over the way to hop. hop. He's got room here. I mean, he can. Who goes decides to go short to Puga. I'm going to give uh, some kudos to Hop. He seems like the only one who's been out here the full match. Seems to be going at 100% still. As we sent the finds Hop. Rotates the ball around back to Vicente. Back to Mitchell. Slowly but surely, I'll be on pushing forward. See if he tries to cross. No, he goes back to Mitchell. Finds Hop. 
Over to Hansen. Hansen keeps it in. He's one on one right now. Actually, two now he's on got two one, players yeah. now. Oh, oh right between through. the two of them. Can Shoot. Oh, my goodness. Good closeout by McGrath. Oh, if he could have gotten offside. a foot on that. Oh, that was my an offside flag right there raised. I'll see the replay right now. Gets through a great little tunnel. I don't think it was offside. It might have been a hurt. I don't whistle. think it was offside at all because how do you, he, Hansen had the ball. Yeah, so there definitely was a whistle. I don't know. And the flag was raised, so. Here we go, Gonzalez says. Oh, no, it's not Gonzalez taking it. Referee oh, blows the whistle, telling them to get the play going. Ball back in play. Right to Daniel ball Vicente. Through, oh, who loses through. it. Nagelstad. Has to play back. Lots of pressure by Albion. Oh. Goes long. Trying to find Cetera, but Hop is right there. Hansen goes to try and dispossess, but Loose ball Ward right is right there. Cerro over in the corner. Can't get to it. It'll be a throw in for Albion San Diego here. See Hops another. with his world famous long throw ins. Substitution again for Chattanooga FC. Need Entering the game, number 17, Chris Bermudez. Number 17 coming into the game for Chattanooga, and Christopher they Bermudez. No moments, yes. Bisava is coming through. He's got some room, finds Malongo. What can he do? Can't keep possession. Ball is loose. Fighting for the ball. Good job by him, maintaining it. Absolutely. These guys are playing so ferociously right now. Daniel Vicente. He's got somebody on him. Oh, gentle touch over to Hop. Looking for Hansen. He's got Hansen right there. So again, oh, to oh, 2 oh, 2 in between two guys. Nice turn, nice turn. Hold on to it, hold on Trying to it. Trying to find some space oh. balls. Got deflected again. Corner and kick for Albion San Diego. Throw in. Oh, I apologize. <laughs> throw in. <laughs> Another substitution. Marcus Nagelstad. Put in a good shift, scored on that penalty kick to tie the game. Coming out of the game right now for him. His 15th goal of the season. Again, the league leader. That's some, um, I think that's bold play calling uh, for Chattanooga to reload the guns. The throw in. That's how you know that everything's on the line right now. It'll be a goal kick. And barring an absolute miracle right now for Albion San Diego, they're about to suffer their first loss since June 10th when they lost to Cal Strikers, Cal, Cal United. United Strikers. Here we go. Gonzalez about to boot it out. See how far he goes with it. Last time uh, he didn't take a big boot. He just barely tapped it. Looks like he will go long this time. Not too long, medium. Ball gets thrown into the side of the Robertson field. Hop with the ball back to Ben Roach. Ben Roach quickly get, sets it down and runs it up a little bit as himself. Looking for somebody open to boot it all the way up to. Yeah, he's definitely going to go long. He does. Trying to find Puga. Vicente. Daniel Vicente right down the middle of the field. All the Albion players on this side of the field now. Puga, Puga. to Mitchell. Maila Malongo. Malongo. Can he make a turn? Hansen moving in for an right open there. man. Ball gets deflected out. It'll be a corner kick, perhaps the last chance of the game for Albion to tie it. Going to see a lot of players. Even Ben Roach is coming along. <laughs> oh, he's eyes not, not too, too actually. Far. He, he did decide for a second, but then he's like, no, I can't give up the, uh, the third one on the counter. So it'll be Puga. Yeah, I think head coach Ziggy Kortowski had something to say about that too. Referee having a word right there. He will call something. We know he'll call something if they see something in the yeah, penalty box. Yeah, call it in the box. Exactly. That's exactly what uh, Chattanooga does not want. Knock, gets knocked out. So we see contact right there. Two guys going at it. Oh, two guys are really going at it right now. I think it's Jacob Hopp. And the keeper, Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Yeah. We're going to need, definitely need a replay on this to see what happened. Gonzalez is still on the ground there. Oh, injury for sure. You see, all, you saw a little melee right there, but the ball was being knocked out. So we'll have to see the replay on that. Gonzalez definitely on the ground right now. It definitely looked like Gonzalez had a hold of Hop too, because Hop was trying to stand up. Yeah, the referee doing his best to maintain composure right here at the end. If he looks like he's getting up to his feet now. It's his arm too, his elbow. 
No cards were issued right there. Just the whistle. Looks like it's going to be a free. See the replay right there. Words being exchanged. Yeah, it's a little. Gonzalez yeah. is already on the ground, so we couldn't see exactly what happened. But ball back in play. As the referee blows the final whistle to end the game. I see a little bit of frustration there from Jacob Hopp still. Chattanooga coming up with the w big 2-1 to one win after being down one nothing early in the match. Yeah, Albion played so strong and then ended and up going down I to think 10 that, men. That penalty kick really changed the tempo a bit early in the second half. And then we saw McGrath give them the lead on the... The header that beat Roach. Nothing Roach could do on that one. And a big win for them. The visitors come out with the three points in a very hard-fought game. A lot of yellows being issued, a lot of fouls. Both teams created as much chances as they could under the circumstances, Mary Beth. But this really helps out Chattanooga in the standings and solidifies them in second place. Yep. It's uh, kind of uh, definitely not what was expected today. This is an interesting turn. So there's still plenty of football left in the season. We've got plenty... You know, it's not the end of the time for Albion. They definitely have a chance to get it back. And again, they have a match on Saturday. A huge match against Michigan Stars now, who are now in no. third place. Correct. So they, uh, they're they definitely going to have to play to their fullest extent and uh, watch those cards.